find the time or times of day when you naturally have the highest mental acuity. And that's really when you want to engage in these learning bouts. And then get to the point where you're making errors and then keep making errors for seven to 30 minutes. Just keep making those errors and drill through it. And you're almost seeking frustration. And if you can find some pleasure in the frustration, yes, that is a state that exists. You've created the optimal neurochemical milieu for learning that thing. But then here's the beauty of it. You also have created the optimal milieu for learning other things afterward. If you leave that bout of, I gave the example of free throws, or maybe it's playing tennis, or maybe it's some other skill, and you sit down to read a book, your brain is in a heightened state to learn and retain the information because those chemicals don't get released and then shut down. You're creating a whole milieu and environment of these chemicals. And the tale of how long these chemicals stay, uh, you know, sloshing around in your brain has too many factors for me to put a hard number on it. It's going to depend on transporters and enzymes and all sorts of things. But at least for an hour or so, I would say, you're going to be in a state of heightened learning and the ability to learn not just the motor patterns, but cognitive information, language information. Maybe you go to therapy right after that and you work on something in a very deliberate way that you're trying to, to work on. Maybe you don't go to therapy. Maybe you do something else um, that's important to you. Again, there are just a variety of examples I could give. There are a number of things that allow us to powerfully access these states of error that are kind of surprising, but also kind of fun. And these aren't, again, these aren't gimmicks. These tap into these basic mechanisms of plasticity. And now some of you are probably saying flow state, flow state. Okay, I have friends that work on flow states and who are involved in flow states and trying to figure out what they are. I have great respect for those people. So I want to you know, tip my hat to them. Very important work. But again, flow is an expression of what you already know how to do. It's, what, it's not how you learn. It's how you express what you've already learned. So I want to be really clear about that. It's been kind of presented as this super state or highly desirable state, but it's that, you know, we can all reach for. That's the wrong rung to reach for until you already know how to do the things that I'm describing, in my opinion. So the vestibular system, if you can engage the vestibular system and create some errors within the vestibular motor operations that you're carrying out, you create a neurochemical state that then makes you very, very good at learning very quickly, regardless of age. So what would this look like? Does this mean just doing inversions? Well, does this mean doing yoga? Maybe. Does this mean um, taking uh, corners faster on your road bike? Does this mean, um, let's say you always swim freestyle or breaststroke? Does this mean swimming uh, you know, uh, backstroke or butterfly? It depends. It depends, however, on a very very easy to understand parameter, which is how regularly you perform a particular motor behavior and how novel a behavior is. So the more novel that a behavior is in terms of your relationship to gravity, the more it will open up the opportunity for plasticity. Have you ever seen somebody who just jumped out of the plane for the first time you know, with a, par with a parachute? I, I, I don't even want to think about what, if you've just seen somebody who jumped out of a plane for the first time without a parachute, I would just hope the plane was on the ground. But if you've seen somebody after that, they are in this incredible state because their body and brain are flooded with all these neurochemicals because it's very novel to them. However, you know, I've got friends from communities that do, you know, have done thousands upon thousands, maybe tens of thousands of jumps, and they're always alert and aware, but it becomes pretty regular for them. That's the point. And they're not in this kind of buzzed out, excited state afterwards because it's routine for them. So the key is to bring novelty to the vestibular motor experience, the vestibular motor commands that you're, that you're performing. And how do you do that? Well, it's all about your orientation relative to gravity. Now, I wouldn't want anyone to place themselves at risk. So if you can't do handstands, don't try and do them freestanding and whatever. If you're good at handstands, guess how much plasticity doing a handstands for half an hour is going to create for you? Zero, zero. Your body is fully comfortable walking on your hands. I see these people walking on your hands, being upside down, being inverted. You know, your Cirque du Soleil performers, they're very comfortable there. And there's zero learning, zero plasticity because the failures and errors and the relationship to gravity are very typical for that individual. Now, what this means is that if we're going to use motor practices to open up plasticity for learning, not just those practices, but the, some 
maybe some cognitive skills or other things in the period that follows, we need to create a sense of novelty relative to gravity. And that means being either in a new position or slightly unstable. Believe it or not, this I don't want anyone injuring themselves, but the sensation of, of falling or close to falling signals the cerebellum to signal the deep brain centers that release these neurochemicals that something is very different and we need to correct this error very, very fast. Now, earlier I was talking about high contingencies for learning and you know you definitely don't wanna make it a kind of like either survive this or, or die kind of experience. I've, um, I confess I occasionally look at these parkour videos on YouTube and uh, believe it or not, a lot of those people have died um, the, the ones that do these like, ridiculous things of, of hanging off of buildings and things. I am not suggesting you do that. Please don't do that. What I'm talking about is finding safe ways to explore the sensory motor vestibular space, as we call it, the relationship between those things. So that could be through yoga. If you're terrible at yoga, there's more opportunity for you to learn than somebody who's very skilled at yoga, for instance, or gymnastics or handstands or on your road bike. This is unfortunately what I don't want to name brands, but stationary bikes where they give you the visual experience of moving through space, but you're not actually moving through physical space. There's no vestibular feedback. It's all visual, right? You're stationary on the bike, right? So unless you're hanging off the bike in your living room, like almost to the point you're tipping the bike, you're not getting the actual vestibular uh, motor sensory mismatch. That mismatch is the signal that deploys dopamine, epinephrine, and these other things. I don't care how excited or how much fun the ride was or how much music you're playing that you love. It's not the same situation as being out of, uh, out of your normal relationship to the gravitational pull.